Sabah everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to talk about the first 10 things you should know that you need to actually set up on your Galaxy Z Fold 2 to be able to get the best experience. This is TK and this is the Galaxy Z Fold 2. Let's check it out. Like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon so that you're always notified to whenever we have new videos on the channel. As you can imagine, Samsung did ship out the Z Fold 2 a little bit earlier ahead of when it was actually supposed to be made available. And of course, I got mine in black. I didn't want to go with the bronze, the mystic bronze. Everybody's going for the mystic bronze. And personally, I like that nice, subtle and just kind of uh, understated uh, representation the way we have it here. Uh, the package is pretty simple. You pretty much the phone, a charger and a cable, nothing else, really no headphones, no additional, uh, you know, accessories or anything like that. And we're not even a case. So no case. We definitely need to talk about cases in a little bit. But what I want to share with you guys is after we take everything out of the box, what do we actually need to do to get the experience on the Z Fold 2 to be the best? And that's what this video is all about. Now it goes without saying that you do need to turn on the device and of course, set it up, log in with your Samsung account, log in with your Google account so you can get everything set up the way you want them that way. For me, I used uh, Samsung Smart Switch and I was able to transfer for all my data over for my Galaxy S20 Ultra, which ultimately was my on my Note 20 Ultra, and I transferred all my information here. I did not transfer my images. That's one thing you want to keep in mind is that the device here doesn't have the same storage as we had last year. We only have 256 gigs of internal storage. So if you're coming from a device that has an SD card and you're transferring data over, just be mindful of the amount of data you're transferring as you don't have an expandable SD card option here, any, or even actually the ability of getting a 512 yet in the US. So. 256 gigs of internal storage, everything worked out fine. I was able to import everything. And as you notice, I am using my own personal launcher. This is pretty much uh, Nova Prime as what I've used on most of my devices. Nothing's wrong with the One UI 2.5 launcher. There's a lot of good customizations. And I'm actually even using their own customization option to be able to put this lock screen wallpaper, which is what we have. And that'll be actually one of my first things I wanna share with you guys. The fact that we can actually put video lock screen wallpapers on, the, this, on these devices. So. One UI has been carrying this for quite some time. If you're familiar or not knowing exactly how to do this, it's pretty simple. You unlock your device, you pretty much download a video or take a video. So you can actually take videos directly with the camera. And of course, you'll be able to apply them directly in here. But you do need to actually start the process in the gallery app. So in the gallery app, you just need to go into, let's say, downloads. And if you already downloaded some stuff, I notice right there, I have a few videos here that I've actually already taken out. And those are going to be some of the things I'm able to apply as my lock screen wallpaper. And of course, this is the one I'm using on my lock screen right now. One thing to keep in mind is that if you have the device open in this format, the lock screen that you're going to be configuring is this lock screen, meaning it's going to be the one that you unlock with here. It's very much different than what you have on the lock screen on the main device. And that's because the UI recognizes the outside device as a separate, uh, kind of like a separate uh, home screen. So if you want to lock it, set it up here, pretty much the exact same situation. You identify it, you go through, open it in again directly in the app and you say set as wallpaper. By default, it doesn't ask you where it's going because it only applies it to the lock screen. It does not apply it to the home screen. And of course, you can see here, it needs to be a 15 minute, 15 second video, no audio. Obviously, you can trim it if you do need to set it up. And then you'll hit the button here that says set as lock screen. And the next time you unlock your device, it works right away. It doesn't cover the always on display, but it is something that's nice. And if I wanted to do it for the internal one, it's exactly the same process. Go into the gallery app, open it up find the actual video that I wanted to actually apply. Let's say I do want to apply here. And then again, same thing. I go in and I say set as wallpaper. And again, it sizes it to what you wanted. And you can kind of see how the preview looks like here on the home screen. Very simple, very easy. And again, first thing I think you should do to be able to get that nice little feel of personalization that you have on your device. Now it goes without saying that there is some things that we need to keep in mind whenever we're handling this device. This device obviously has a foldable display. This, de this display actually does fold and there is a little bit of a crease. So this is always gonna be here. So going so you can see it right there. Unfortunately, when you actually look at it straight up, for the most part, it actually almost disappears. You can kind of not see it at all here in the video. But one thing I do wanna to mention to you guys is even though with all the improvements that we've seen from Samsung, it is still recommended that we actually use the actual hinge to close the device. So when you're closing it, do not put pressure on the display. That means whenever we're opening up the display and we're using it, do not use your fingers on it. Do not try to push against it. I've seen a lot of people do it, but extended amount of usage like that will ultimately cause some damage to the display. We do have a one-time replacement that you do need the ability to pay for. So there's a low cost there. And as you can see right there, there is a screen protector that's already pre-applied by Samsung, which is something that's different from the original Fold. So to open and close, it's very simple. To close it, you put your finger on the hinge. To the top of the bottom one and you use the hinge here kind of like leverage you push down and you close it and that actually pretty much works the same opening you grab the sides on both sides and you open it up all the way here for again not recommended to actually put your finger in the middle of the display so just will help you kind of extend the, the life of the display that's something that we need to keep in mind even from the first fold always hold it 
close it up and then use it. Now, we notice the fact that the display on the front here is definitely a lot bigger than what we had last year. It's actually a fully functional 60 hertz refresh rate display. And the reason I mentioned the word 60 hertz is because that's the resolution or the refresh rate that this device or this display is capped at. So when we open it up to the full display here, when we jump into the full device, let's go ahead and open it up. We'll go into the settings tab and then we'll go under display. We'll notice that on the inside display, we have motion smoothness that gives us the ability of having that automatic mode kind of like the Note 20 Ultra to 120 Hertz. So the internal display, which is the bigger one and you want to have it there, is running at 120 Hertz. But if I switch over to the external display, let's go ahead and unlock the device. We'll jump into the settings the same way. That option actually becomes unavailable. So let's go ahead and jump into display and then we under motion smoothness, not available. Motion smoothness can only be used on the main screen, which is the internal one. So. Internal display will run at 120 hertz, basically adaptive auto mode. External display will run at 60. So that's something to keep in mind. So if you want to play games, it is recommended that you play games on the main display on the inside as this is going to be your best performing display of all up to 120 hertz foldable display from Samsung. Now, of course, using this massive display requires us to actually have a little bit of uh, multitasking because we definitely want to be able to do it. So there's a few ways we can actually initiate something. So first and foremost, I can actually launch different applications. I'll go in here. Let's say we'll open up Twitter. So Twitter is a full screen application. If I open the side launcher from here on the right side, I'm actually able to app open other applications. So let's go ahead and click YouTube. I'll open it in the center. I can either open it as a pop-up view, so that makes it into a small window. And again, it's something that you can use. And if, yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just a small pop-up. You can make it into a fourth app. But if I swipe up from the right and use YouTube right there, and then this time just move it to the right, you'll notice how it kind of highlights the side. So that's kind of giving me the options of opening up split applications. So now I have YouTube as well as Twitter running at the same time. But let's say I want to take it to the next level. I want to open up Chrome. I'll open up one more time. I can do the same thing, open it up as a pop up or I can bring it in as a top or bottom on the right side only. Left side doesn't support that. Left side can only do full screen. So right side, I'll go ahead and put it in and it went ahead and now opened up and now I'm running three different applications at the same time, which is again, very nice. Now, the next step, of course, is to be able to take it, take it to the next level. So let's go ahead and do this one. Let's go ahead and open up the camera app and I'm going to open up the camera as a pop up window. So now the camera is running as a pop up window. I'm running three different apps in the background. And of course, this has to kind of become more functional, obviously. But if you want to be able to do it this way, you can. Um, or I can just click on it, close it up, and then just interact with these apps. Conversely, you're able to basically resize, go sideways up a little bit here. And of course, uh, just basically, if you're done with it, you just close it to the right, open up the main app, and then go home. Of course, uh, General Singala is over there, so that's going to be always fun having uh, E playing in the background right there. Now, of course, there's something to be said, the fact that we're literally using applications on the main display and the internal display. Go ahead and open up YouTube. Again, full application. I'll jump into my subscription tab. And all I have to do here is just basically open it up all the way and it'll jump into the same tab, open it up in full screen mode. Conversely, let's say I am watching a video on the main screen. So here's a video real quick from uh, my buddy, Josh. And what we go ahead and do and go ahead and start the video and I'll go ahead and turn off the audio mode real quick. But if I close the actual fold, the fold itself will actually keep, well, the video keeps playing and YouTube stays open. I'm also able to go full screen and watch the video in more of a tent mode because we have the speakers here. Now the video actually plays and we actually have a nice little tent. I'm actually propping the phone using its own mechanism because I can prop it in any level I want using the stereo speakers and of course watching the video here. Very, very nice. And again, a great way to continue applications in the actual UI. Now this setting isn't turned on by default. You do need to go into display under the settings then go to continue apps on cover screen and then go through the list of applications you'd like to be able to use. Now, keep in mind, not everything is supported. An example would be Instagram. Instagram will actually restart itself every time I go from one screen to the other. So if I open up Instagram here, it'll open up in this form. And if I go ahead and close it and open up the main screen, it doesn't actually start it up out of way. Uh, I'll go ahead and open it up here. I'll jump back into it. It restarts the app. And that's one of the things. Instagram currently does not support continuation from back screen or internal screen to the outside. Uh, Google Maps, some of the other applications are of course all supported. You just need to turn it on in the internal settings and then you'll have that continuation. So you can start something doing it in the full screen here and then jump into the main screen. And again, it'll work absolutely fantastic there. Now out of the box, you probably will realize that when you press and hold the power button on the right side to turn on the power options, you'll probably actually get Bixby uh, routines or open up Bixby. That's by default how it's configured. Uh, now, as I showed you guys at the beginning here, uh, what you can actually do is go in directly into the power button. You'll hit that power on the top and get to this option that says side key configuration. You can configure it to open Bixby or open up any other application or even basically turn off basically to show up the power menu. So if we press and hold, it shows up the power menu. If I do basically a double press quickly, it'll open up the camera or open up Bixby and you can configure it to whichever way you'd like. The main difference is that just at, out of the box, by default, it's set up to use Bixby, but you can configure that to be the standard power button just as easily by just jumping into the top, 
clicking it and then reconfiguring it from here. Now, the main thing that I showed you guys at the beginning is the ability of watching video on the front facing display as basically more of a prop situation, which is definitely very good. But one thing you probably just noticed when I did fold the, uh, the camera here, so I'll go ahead and fold it, the device gets into a mode called flex mode. And now flex mode works really nice, especially when you're watching video on the internal display, but even when you're using the camera. Let's say I'll go ahead and snap a quick image here. I'll take a picture. It gives me a preview sitting uh, at this point and I'm able to use it in this form. So this becomes more of my preview. I can actually hold the camera this way and as I can basically just configure it since the cameras are sitting on the back, this is kind of more of a, like a run and gun and just previewing those images. And as you can see here, even when you set it up correctly, you'll notice that the controls show up on the right and of course the preview sits on the left. Now, this isn't pretty much the only option. Let's say we open it up all the way and I wanna be able to use those main cameras as my main camera shooters. I'll go ahead and turn on the on option here. There's a button on the top, right? And for the most part, what you'll notice here is that these cameras are now being used as the primary cameras and it shows up the display on the front. So I can actually face myself like this, take videos, take pictures, and I'm able to use the best cameras that we have here on the Z Fold 2. So very nice. Again, uh, basically flex mode works in many, many ways as well. If we jump into YouTube, that video, that same video we were watching from Josh, I'll go ahead and open it up. I'll go ahead and start the video, but I'll go ahead and open it up in tenth mode. You'll notice the video kind of shrinks down and now I have the ability of interacting for the rest of the YouTube UI. So a lot of cool things set up built in to have that one handed. And of course, I can still have the ability of using gestures here. Um, one of the other options, of course, that came in with the One UI 2.5 is the ability of using our microphone on the Bluetooth headset. So if I go into Pro Video, which is also available here, and with the help of a pair of uh, basically either Galaxy Buds Live or any kind of pair of uh, Bluetooth headphones, once they connect, and then once you have them in your ear, you'll be able to configure it. So let's go ahead and jump in real quick and let me show you guys also one of the really cool features of the fact is we can actually prop our device to use it as a stand in almost in any position we want, either be it landscape or even portrait. So the Galaxy Z Fold 2 is one of the very few devices that you're able to actually prop up on its own, which is really nice. So you don't need a kickstand, you don't need a case, you literally just have to open it up. And what's even better is the fact that they now actually using the flex option here is the ability of turning on the front facing display to actually use the back sensors. That gives you the ability of actually framing yourself and actually getting the images and the videos that you've wanted using the best cameras on this device, not necessarily just the front facing camera. Although we're able to record 4K 60 frames per second from both the front facing and the back facing sensors. So definitely very nice. Speaking of which, we're still able to do the exact same thing when you're holding the phone. Now, although it kind of looks like a tablet, so you're kind of holding a bigger phone, Again, we're using the main best sensors on the actual device to record video. And I'm still using Bluetooth because that's again, part of the pro video features that came in with One UI 2.5. Very nice. And again, all the way up to 4K 60 with the Z Fold 2. Now, the next thing I wanna to talk to you guys about is something that is very, very functional, especially when it comes to devices that are this big, meaning devices that have such a large display, I cannot reach my finger to the other side. And so I mean, we're gonna talk about an application here called One-Handed Operation Plus, which is part of Good Lock that actually does work on the Galaxy Z Fold 2. So what I mean by this is I'm actually easily able to jump in between multiple applications. I'm also able to actually launch a cursor now to be able to use my finger here for my left, right thumb to actually configure or touch basically or interact with the UI and of course, put it away. The other options, of course, the ability of basically launching more of a quick tax, task switcher here. Also the ability of launching more of like a quick shortcut, opening up my app drawer. A lot of things that we can do directly with it here. This is not interfering with the side launcher that we have. This is just built-in functionalities that are in directly part of this application or this suite of applications called GoodLock. The one I was just talking to you guys about is called One-Handed Operation Plus. And you probably already noticed this at the beginning of my video when I started doing my task switching. This is very different than the standard task switching that we have on Android with One, with one UI 2.5. I'm also able to open this type of a menu, which opens up like a, like a quick shortcut opening. And all of this is actually part of One Handed Operation Plus and the ability of using Task Changer. Now, there are other modules that I've covered in the past, and I'll give you guys a link to those videos before, but there's Quick Star, Multi Star, Nav Star, Nodi Star as well. Theme Park is really, really cool. And what I mean by this is if you've ever wanted to customize a theme around an image, meaning a background on your, on your phone, this is the way to do it. So let's go ahead and jump in here. I'm gonna jump into, uh, we'll go down and download, and we're gonna go ahead and use this picture of Vegeta. By default, it recognizes there's a lot more white in the image and gives us a wider, lighter background. You can customize the color options here. I can change the actual mood, the style of the actual uh, icon setup here. Again, not that I would use these colors, but I'm just giving you guys like a quick example. And of course, the icon options for the tray. And once you're done, you can save it, apply it, and then use that as your system level default to match your wallpaper. Now, the last couple of things I definitely wanna share with you guys are things that you're able to do with your device on other things, meaning 
Uh, we actually now have wireless text that is present here, a simple actually activation. You turn it on as long as you're connected to the Wi-Fi. You'll be able to actually see the available TVs in the area that are supporting the service. So in this situation, I'm going to show you guys this quick example I was running with my 40-inch uh, Samsung monitor or TV that I have here in the office. And it worked absolutely fantastic. You use your display as your uh, cursor. Everything works great. Uh, the other option that you also have here is the ability of using Link to Windows, which is a really good upgraded version that we've seen that works with Windows 10. So you just have to activate it here directly from the lock screen and of course set it up with your device, with your Microsoft account, and you'll be able to get your notifications, uh, text messages, respond to notifications, and even interact with your phone directly over a Wi-Fi when it's connected to the same network or even over mobile data. Definitely very good and very easy things to use to be able to get the most especially when it comes to multitasking, productivity, and all around just enjoyment of the device. This is not my first experience using a foldable device from Samsung. I had the, the original Fold twice, and I also had the, the Z Fold earlier this year. So I've had a lot of coverage and a lot of experience with foldables, specifically from Samsung's iteration. The front-facing display is definitely much better. Uh, the fact that it's not 120 hertz, not an issue. I probably will be playing game mostly on the internal display than the external one. But the fact is, now actually, I can actually use the front-facing display to respond to text messages and, of course, do this the quick little things that don't require me to be a little bit more, uh, I would say, multitasking heavy. Um, the device itself will work pretty much on almost all carriers. Uh, again, you do need to get the specific model for specifically ultra-wide bands. That's something to keep in mind. Uh, for me, I'm using it on T-Mobile and I'm able to get 5G. It works pretty good. Uh, a couple of configuration messages came in when I popped in my SIM and everything else was pretty much easy to go. Um, I don't have a case on it yet and I do need to pick up some cases or at least some skins to kind of get a little bit of protection. I feel like I'm, I'm babying this too much. Uh, the first generation fold I had a case on and it definitely made the experience a little bit better. Um, overall mechanism, the device, the display, everything is a lot better. Look forward to obviously to more videos from me. And of course, if you have any questions, please feel free to give them, well, put them in the description below or below the description, the comment section. Let me know in the comments below, what do you guys think of the Z Fold 2? Do you think this is the right foldable format to go with or is the Microsoft Duo something that you should be considering? Now, the Duo has two displays that are connected with a basically a foldable hinge. It's not a foldable display, but the actual device runs as if it has one extended canvas, which is similar to what we have here. But again, Microsoft's approach is very different than what we see here with Samsung. But of course, I'd love to hear from you guys what you guys think. Like and subscribe as usual, of course. Thank you very much for the support, and I'll see you guys in the next video.